Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank Hello, you for having everyone. me here. Welcome to our Lacuna Festivals event. Um, I'm Sarah Jane Mason, Director of Lacuna Festivals, and I'm here tonight. I'm very excited to have Bianca Turner, one of our festival artists here, who is going to do a presentation um, about a specific part of her practice. So I'm going to hand straight over to Bianca, over to you. Hi, hello from Los Angeles. It's hot here too, so. <laughs> um, well, talking about heat, you can talk about climate change and you open a whole entire can of worms or Pandora box. So um, having a background in uh, economic studies and biology and seeing how the climate changes and the planet goes through so much um transformation so metamorphosis um i was thinking uh, last year to create a collection called back from 2022 so now i would say it's back from 2022 slash 2023 because um as the day progressed um i i add more <laughs> paintings and i have more ideas for this collection However, um, I was thinking uh, that a lot of people would uh, see the world in 1,000 years from, from now uh, through the lenses of technology, advanced AI, advanced uh, bots. And um, I um, know that a lot of artists probably will go into uh, digital art and all these um, amazing stuff that you can do with the help of the AI. But I wanted to see uh, this, to treat this uh, subject from the point of view of biogenetics uh, engineering. Um, because as I said, um, I love biology. I have class postgraduate studies in biology. And I think from that point of view, AI and the, the advancement of uh, robotics in biology could be good. Um, and um, so I created about 30 paintings. The collection starts um, with this lady who is um, from our times now, more from Los Angeles area. It's um, from one of the tribes that we used to have living here. And it's uh, called She's Seeing the Future. So um, that would be the first piece. The collection will show up on the um, page uh, soon. Um, after that, actually, I think she, uh, oh yeah, perfect. So the first one is uh, the first woman. It's above the painting with uh, NATO. If you wanna click on that picture, thank you so much. And then from there, we will just go with the arrow to the next picture. So this is, um, She feels the future, let's call. So it's not only seeing, but she's feeling the future. It's a, a mixed media on paper. All of my paintings on paper are framed. And then um, I don't say that I would be related to anything like that, but it happened to have a dream. So I painted my dream when my dream in the next painting is um, the, um, Unfortunately, it's about the war that it's happening now between uh, Russia and Ukraine with uh, this invasion of Russia. And um, however, in my dream, I had um, some dates for the World War III. Um, if, if you wanna go to the next picture, um, the painting is actually even called World War III October 28, 2026, November 2nd, 2032. Um, 
and pretty much this is the the immediate future um, as it came in my dream. So let's hope that it's not going to happen. But um, after that, um, of course, everyone would like to have peace after six years of war. The next painting is Tis, and that is depicted as our whole planet. The, the background um, are the colors of the planet. And uh, planet is also called Mother Gaia, so or Gaia. Um, and that's why it's in a form of a woman. And her name is Peace because um, Peace is very fragile. We have to take care of um, this. And, and unfortunately, the governments of the world don't spend enough on peace. We uh, spend per year almost $20 um, billion dollars on um, war, on the industry of war, and less than $14 million on the industry of peace, which would be a $5 per uh, person in the world just for peace. So that's not enough. And the fragility of peace is represented in this uh, uh, large painting with uh, synthetic white hair extensions. So uh, actually the piece is very um, st sturdy and uh, strong, but I wanted to represent the fragility of peace with this um, synthetic hair extensions. The next if I'm painting- right, Bianca, if, if I just interrupt very briefly, um, this last picture that we looked at, the World War III one, this was entered for our Clash 2022 exhibition. Am I right? Right, because the I had a dream um, in November 2021. Oh, there we go. It's super interesting already to hear how this work's developing. Sorry, I will mute myself. <laughs> so, uh, well, let's hope that my dream was wrong. <laughs> and um, so after peace, we know that now everyone is trying to explore the space and is this battle for uh, space, which corporation is going to be uh, um, the first one to dominate the space. The government, um, according to different documentaries, won fight as the governments, they will fight as corporations. So, however, um, United States wants to be the first one to make it to Mars. And if that will happen, I would see that the mission commanders, commander Mars One would be a woman. Actually, this is the portrait of the um, lady that was in charge of international um, space station uh, in 2000, from 2020 to 2021, I believe, and I apologize, I forgot her name, but she was, uh, we had a, a female commander, and at some point we had, the whole crew was a female, so I, uh, I can see this in the future, that the first person that will go to Mars will be a woman, and um, that's why um, my interpretation, it's still organic, co connected to the idea of trees and earth, but all this would be like tubes attached to her costume. The next painting, um, it's something that takes us back to the earth. Um, we don't know if Vogue or um, fashion magazines will still be the way we know them. Most likely they will be super digitized. Um, I can see them probably as uh, um, moving pictures on buildings. Um, however, um, if you look on Vogue below, Vogue uh, usually has to be the year and the year on this piece is 2022. Um, and I was a little bit sarcastic in my idea because of all these conspiracies during the pandemic that if we take the vaccine, we will all transform into reptiles. So this is uh, 
combination between a woman and a reptile that is wearing this beautiful dress. Um, the next piece is referring to um, 1kg. So at this moment, we are at 5G, so the speed of the internet and the connection to the satellites is um, at 5G. We are already out with 6G and working for 7 and 8G. So if everything is moving that fast, um, this piece represents the portrait of a woman who actually has the everything, her body, her uh, her brain connected to the satellites directly. We like I envision like we won't need cellulars or tablets or not nothing else. We can just through either a chip or something can just be connected and uh, communicate through um, telepathic ideas. Um, I also treated the next piece. It's uh, it's showing. Um, the eyes of a reptile, but this is not from the point of view of the conspiracy theory um, that we will all be reptiles or <laughs> um, the vaccine will transform us into uh, some type of animal. It's just that um, in uh, spirituality, the snake is represented as something that you cannot really trust. So these are the eyes of a uh, snake and um, it's called some people because I wanted to analyze this subject of people of the future as still being as people they are now or how they were in the past. So you can trust everyone and we will still have our faults and vices and we won't be perfect. Um, as much as we will try to achieve that, we won't be perfect as humans. Um, next piece is called October 32nd. So um, I was thinking about uh, Nietzsche's uh, theory of um, time compression and um, if time will move actually um, would compress, then we would have one extra day in October. And on that day, there will be a sale for cloning two creatures in your life that um, you are missing the most. And this is a cloning between a woman who left a man and um, his cat who passed away. So this was in my idea, this is uh, October 32nd and it's the cloning between a woman and a cat. Um, he wants to have both of them back in his life. And I see the bioengineering being able to combine the species through cloning. Um, I don't really believe in that, but um, when I look to see what's happening with cloning and bioengineering and genetics, I can say that probably everything will be possible. <laughs> the next piece stays on the same uh, theme of genes and genetics. It's fe February 30th. So again, the time will um, stretch and we'll have uh, two, well, one or two extra days for February. And this is an experiment that the um, bioengineers are doing between cloning two species. At this point, we know that two species cannot uh, reproduce, so to create another species. Uh, well, however, you can mix uh, from the same uh, family, like a horse with a donkey, that's possible, but not a horse with a monkey for example. And um, in my idea is that that will be possible again through cloning. So this is a cloning between um, a parrot and um, lemur. A lemur is one type of primate that exists in Madagascar. 
So um, we'll see if the science will go that far. Um, that will go into the next piece because uh, some people who are spiritual don't accept this type of bioengineering. They all say, well, we shouldn't play God. If that's true, if we go too far as as humans and um, we take the bio, we cross that bioethical line, then uh, I created this uh, painting as forgive us um, with the idea in mind that there might be a supreme power or a, um, something that created the universe. And now we are trying to just uh, get smarter than that entity so um the next piece it's interesting from the point of view because it's grass-fed organic meat um i was just doing some research and a thousand years ago we had 400 million people on earth now today we have eight billion so it's a huge increase. If the population's uh, growth will go the way it's going now, even with wars and um, pandemics and whatever else we will go to, um, in a thousand years, we will have probably 11 to 12 billion people. However, the earth can sustain uh, comfortably 9 billion. But we won't run out of resources if we go up to 11 billion. However, when we cross that line, then we won't have food or water. And um, I don't know if you guys know, but the T-Rex um, was already discovered. And um, I'm talking about uh, uh, the dinosaur from the past. So the T-Rex, it's already getting into uh, being cloned because even eggs of the T-Rex were discovered. So the um, biologists are working on cloning the T-Rex. Well, the T-Rex was the, the most ferocious predator of the other animals that were alive on that time. But um, if it's possible to clone the T-Rex, which it's happening now, so I don't know exactly why they are doing it, but I was thinking that there might be the possibility that in the future, um, in order to feed the whole entire planet, we will have this type of meat and uh, McDonald's will still be in business, just a little bit change if you see the arches in the back. <laughs> um, and um, that's my idea, grass-fed organic, now we say uh, beef, or and then in the future will be grass-fed organic meat that comes from the dinos. Um, and talking about climate change, we're going to the next painting. And um, some people will remember the forest from postcards or um, um, just from uh, visual images, but the forest, as we already know, uh, they, they are uh, getting um, attacked by this climate change. Right now in Amazon, uh, Amazonia, or in other places, look in Europe, we, you guys have this um, a wave heat that's killing so many forests. So I'm not really sure that the forest and the planet will be that green as we know it now. Um, right now we have 71, well, we used to have 71% of water covering the surface of Earth, and now we are already at 72%. And this is just since I went to school in the last 10 years. So it's uh, it's moving fast, this process of climate change, but hopefully we won't be there to have no forest anymore and someone will take action. I know there are people that are already getting involved in that. So the next painting is back to the war 
because war is in our nature. And this is called in, um, interspatial war two. So second international space war. And I predicted the year is 2,844. This is not, I didn't have a dream. I didn't, I was just looking at uh, how often uh, in the past the big important wars happen with the exception of course of World War I and World War II, which were very close to each other, but um, other wars in the past, um, they, they were like at the, larger distance between themselves. So I was uh, thinking that by 2084, we will already have a second world war happening in space between corporations and um, um, it's very abstract painting, but this is the idea the white things are showing satellites and stations and um, the colors possibly of Mars. Um, the next painting goes into life eruption always. So the way I see it is that um, no matter what, life will always exist in some form or in some place, even if it's not on Earth, somewhere there will be life. We recycle everything. Recycling means life. It's constantly recycling. And um, exactly how sometimes we see from a cement growing um, a sunflower, exactly like that, um, life will thrive. So that's why I put a lot of flowers and animals from um, flora and fauna that we have on Earth. And from this, we go into the next painting where I uh, um, I have my memories from the future. Well, here are different new species that will develop. I know that um, in biology, we all learn that it takes millions of years to create um, rocks and geological um, elements. But also in biology, it could take a long time or it could take not that much uh, long. I mean, not that many years, I'm sorry. Um, in, when we started with the industrialization at the beginning of 1900s, there was a species of moth that was all colorful and uh, pretty. And then in about 20 to 30 years, it, um, change the DNA because the industrialization and the pollution. And now that moth still exists, but adapted, and it's in the colors of uh, the regular moth that we know in like that light gray, beige. And this is a true story. So it, it, it's the same with uh, women's bodies adjustment in the last 300 years. Um, I, I won't go there, so I won't bother some people, but uh, if you research uh, regarding the uh, women's uh, menstrual period of time, then you will see that the last two, 200 to 300 years, we actually even modify our own bodies. So if this happens uh, in such a short time, imagine how many more new species we will have in 1000 years. And of course, a lot that we have now will disappear. Next painting, it's created because I was thinking about how many um, elderly people we have in the world right now. We know that Japan has higher population of elderly people. They really respect their seniors, but there are countries, and unfortunately in the country where I was born in Romania, um, the uh, retirement homes are absolutely awful. Um, and probably you all heard what happened in the last uh, few weeks on TV about um, elderly people being treated as um, in a concentration camps or even worse than that. 
So this is absolutely embarrassing and um, uh, unacceptable. But with the science in the future, when we might not have that many people working in the retirement homes, we might need to clone ourselves at a younger age to take care of us, the ones that we were born. I don't know if this idea makes sense or you guys understand that, but is if you see the gentleman that's rushing and has a question mark above his head, he's an elderly gentleman and he's thinking, should I clone myself to be 40 years old so I can take care of myself that now I am eight years old. And um, another girl, the one with the backpack stays and looks to, she would like to speed up time um, to be more, to have a clone in the future. Many times we also think like, oh, if I would have been so wise 20 years ago, I would have done that much and, you know. Um, the next picture, it's connected to the cloning, uh, the previous picture with the cloning, and this is AI is glitching when it's cloning your face. So you are at the point of uh, choosing and the clone that you want at the age that you want for yourself. And there is the rage against the machine, exactly how today I couldn't <laughs> share with you guys my screen or when you need to print something fast, you run out of ink or the computer freezes when uh, you are in the middle of a Zoom. And um, um, I'm sure that in the past people had problems with the tools, even they were going to the war or using chariots or trying to fix the cars at the beginning of 1900s. Exactly the same that we have now in the present, these um, problems, the rage against the machine is going to continue to happen. I mean, it's still going to be AI versus individual intelligence and there you have it. Once you're trying to clone your face, uh, things could happen and um, you just clone only half of your face. Um, the next, um, so mistakes will still exist. The next painting is the idea that the, um, the transfer of organs from one person to another just for survival would be so advanced that we will also be able to transplant the brain, but also doing it in through the um, combined with cloning process. And I imagine that that's my portrait. And I imagine that that would be a brain transplant into a cryogenic environment. Um, the next picture is exactly what I was um, talking about when nowadays it happens to us. Uh, we have a Zoom conference, we are in a meeting and the computer freezes and your face never looks good uh, when the computer freezes. It's always like uh, um, a funny face. and. Um, due to the fact that this is a, a funny picture and explanation, a lot of people wanted to buy it. It's actually sold. Um, I have to adjust the website, but um, tell me if that's not true, right? <laughs> so the next picture is, um, uh, it's the idea of a bot looking like a person. It's a I mind melt exactly how we have our problems and days when we can take it anymore and you say, oh, my brain is fried. Probably the computers have exactly the, the same situations, but in a different way. That's why they look so robotic in my picture. Um, and Hopefully they won't take it on us. I, I don't believe in the fact that AI will um, take revenge against people. But however, uh, I believe in the fact that at some point we will be so advanced that we, we won't be able to um, know what the right hand is doing uh, 
versus the left hand. And then we could just um, lost our grip on the AI. So the next picture stays at the uh, uh, base of my whole entire art, why I create art. Um, I think my job as an artist is to leave a legacy behind me and to help anyone that I can today and in the future. So this is half of my face, it's called I Am, and it continues with the last painting of the collection, which is an extremely large painting, Hope. So I am hope. If you go to the next painting, it's gonna show the painting hope. Um, because I think we shouldn't say, I hope this will go better. I think we should say, I am the hope to make something go better To I am the hope for someone else. I am hope. So not I, I hope. I am hope. So the next picture is hope and it's the last one in um, in this uh, collection that I made. This is a huge piece. It's a combination of vinyl um, with a 3D printer. I printed uh, vinyl flowers uh, that I created myself. And um, it's... Uh, um, the profile of a combination between Rihanna and another um, person that I know in reality. I created this portrait from my imagination, but hope we will still have as human beings. And uh, we, we had it in the past, we have it now. And I think we will always have the same type of emotions um, even if the world around us will change. So uh, this is how I see the future. I was wondering how um, other people would see the future. I know that um, teenagers nowadays, uh, they draw all this uh, type of uh, manga cartoons and everything, it's a very digitized, but I'm sure there can be hundreds of ideas of how the future can be portrayed. If anyone wants to share, I would love to hear your ideas. Thank you so much, <laughs> Bianca, for this so far. Um, before we hear from anybody else, I'd be super interested in asking just a couple of questions that I think artists from the festivals will be interested in knowing the answers to. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. So the first one is around the materials that you use, because a lot of these say mixed media, and it seems to be quite a range of media. So I wondered if you could talk a little bit about the importance of materials in your work and why you choose to work in this way. Oh, okay. Well, um, first and foremost, as I said, I... Um, thank you, Stephen. Um, I like to recycle. So I talk so much about taking care of our planet. And so I like to recycle. And many times by recycling, it, it means that I have to mix the media if I don't have a color gold. Let's say instead of buying a new one, then I use an oil uh, spray or oil marker. This doesn't mix well with acrylic. Uh, however, on my canvases, I mix them by using uh, bonding agents between uh, bonding chemical agents between acrylic, gouache, um, oil, and water together. Um, when they just open up on on the canvas, I use um, a three D printer where I create from vinyl. I create. Um, very shiny flowers or objects, that type of uh, chrome or silverish color, we don't have it yet for artists. So I uh, found it at um, a car dealer, um, actually was um, also a mechanic, and they had a shop for spraying the cars with this type of uh, 
ink, very expensive, and that's why I don't create that much with uh, with those type of shiny colors because they are expensive. But I create them on my uh, digital printer, three D printer, and I um, print them. Sometimes, let's say a rose, I print it in twenty um, or. Um, 50 and then I cut as many as I need for that particular piece. But as I said, most of my paintings are mixed media, either gouache with acrylic, with oil. Um, I even use uh, silicone. It's a type of silicone that's used for uh, fitness uh, equipment. And that silicone with fluetrol makes everything to go um, easier, smoother on the on the canvas. And then I use um, school glue as a bonding agent. So that's what means mixed media for me, because I'm trying to recycle everything, even branches from the trees. Um, I recycle. I think nature and everything else around us is part of art. So that's Thank fine. you so much. That was like a really in-depth answer. That was awesome. Um, and the other thing that I think is on a lot of creatives' minds at the minute is um, AI and how that's going to impact on our ability to have creative careers and creative jobs and a creative industry. And this must be something that you're thinking about a lot because you're making work around this. So I just wondered what your thoughts were around that. Well, um, actually I just finished a residency at the university in Europe and because I wrote a book, The Business of Art, and the book is getting launched later this month. Uh, I mean, uh, later in August, I'm sorry. Um, and in that book, doing my research, it's a guide for artists to help them to promote themselves. And uh, in that guide, I research about digital art and what is approved as digital art. And so far, um, art created simply by AI with no input from the artist, um, it's not approved anywhere in the world with the exception of Romania. Everywhere in the world, it's banned. I mean, you can create it and sell it on NFT platforms, but you cannot um, do um, exhibitions or um, transactions or showing it in galleries or museums. Um, I don't know how the law is gonna be in the future, but um, I, although I am pro, technology and pro advancement, we don't need more competition. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> so that, that's my point of view. Um, and if that's going to be approved in the future, I still think that an artist should have the possibility to get the idea from its mind to create, to, to have something original, even if it's made by a computer. But human being to be behind that keyboard that inputs the idea in there. But not only in a writing, I mean, an artist should be an artist. If you dream the world in some, as a fantasy, you should be able to make at least a sketch. That's what I think. I don't know if other artists agree with me, but at this point right now, we don't need more competition. Yeah, I totally agree uh, with that. So, um, even has it, put in are, the chat, I think it is an interesting time with AI, but a frightening time too. I think, again, a lot of people will agree with those sentiments. Well, um, to be honest, I don't know if that's possible, but my biggest fear is that the I, AI will steal the idea from my mind. Um, I don't know if you heard, but actually the first lawsuit against AI happened in United States, of course, we like to sue um, here, but it happened two weeks ago and was a um, writer, an author who is suing the AI, saying that the AI in, got the inspiration from her book. So um, that's something that I'm, I don't want to have the AI 
stealing my ideas, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's possible, but um, maybe. Who knows what's possible in the future? I think that's part mm -hmm. of the the fear around it, you know, the unknown potential for this. It's so new. Um, right. We have a... I... Sorry, go on. Go on. Uh, I was just, I would just wanted to say like I'm also afraid that so many people will be without jobs and will be too hard to make a fast conversion the at the speed as we the we develop AI might be scary because I don't know if people will have jobs and this might can you know it could create a big economic crisis in the world so okay look at this aspect from the economy or social political situation so perhaps there'll be a new economic and social order where you know you don't mm -hmm. have jobs and it's not kind of economically driven in the same way that we understand it is now I don't yeah I don't know I don't know there's just yeah it feels like it could go anywhere at the minute Exactly. And then if we go back to my cloning, when people will also live longer, because in this case, the AI helps the medical technology to help with uh, transplants with different um, illnesses, then people will live longer. So then uh, who's going to take care of the elderly? And it's uh, all these uh, ideas in my mind actually a lot of ideas and I'm sure that a lot of artists now will uh, start to think the same way. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the chat, we have a, a comment from Maisie, I think it is. Um, and maybe you've already partially answered this for something you were talking about briefly um, before. Uh, she says, I want to sell my work and you seem to have sold a lot. How do you have success selling works that you want to make rather than specifically made pieces for selling? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, thank you. It's a very good question that brings you back to present and the, the book that I wrote. I'm not sure if my art is good. Um, and I could say that at this point, I just create because I love to create, but I need to show my art. It has to get out of my studio. So I would give the same advice to every artist. You have to get the, uh, to put the art out there. If it's good, if it's not good, you will figure it out at some point what sells and what um, maybe is not too pleasant for, for um, your customers. But after seven years of participating in hundreds of exhibitions and selling my art, I decided to put together this guide for artists. I'm tr not trying to sell you anything. The book will be probably made into an application, which will be probably $2 or something like that. But I wanna, I wanna help other artists sell their art and come out of their shell. Um, I realized that uh, visual artists, um, the ones that graduate from visual art institutes, don't learn the basics that you need, how to put your art out there. You need an art statement, you need a biography, the cur curriculum vitae has to build up on something. And um, I talk about all these things in, in my book, The Business of Art, just to help people because I know that's the need. So anyone can reach out to me um, also on um, my Instagram, can follow me on Instagram. And then once the book comes out, which won't, uh, won't be at a very high price, it will be like very reasonable, um, but I will also give uh, discounts. And um, there it's pretty much a guide um, of, what you need to research, how to make your artist statement. On the other hand, I could just tell you, look at my website and try to, to see how it's made. After you read the book, you understand why I have a short artist, artist statement or the biography has to be only 500 words or less. But don't ever give up and don't stay in your studio. 
get out of the studio, show your art, put your name out there. Thank you that's, so much. That's, that's really inspiring actually that um that last comment really inspiring um and what i can do for the people who are listening live now but also um for the recording when it goes mm -hmm. on youtube if you send me any information like your instagram and how people can access the book when it's published then people who yes. watch this and are interested then um, they'll be able to do that we have two comments in the chat saying that they're interested in the book so You've already got uh, hands on your hands, Bianca. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it. I just talked to the publisher before the uh, call, and they told me that it's getting published. It's going to be audio book. It will be translated. It's written in English, but it, it can be translated. It will be on Amazon, so it will be very reasonable and um, accessible to everyone. And uh, also, you guys can reach out to me on Instagram at Bianca Turner Art. That's fab. Thank you. Um, and we just have a, another comment, which is from Anum, um, who says, Hi, Bianca. Thank you for a great event and for sharing your valuable insights. So Anum's obviously taken something valuable away from this evening as well. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad that I gave you guys some information i'm i'm a little bit of a nerd i like to research a lot before i paint something so uh, research in the um, economy um, biology all these things connected together so i just don't research about art i how to create art i just create it so so thank you so much for um, your time and energy tonight. It's been really appreciated by those people who are here live and I know it will be really appreciated on our YouTube channel. Um, so for now, we will say good night and thank you to Bianca. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it and good luck with the rest of the festival. Bye. Thank you so much.